Hey there, welcome to this video and today we're going to be talking about five things that you can do to get rid of IT band syndrome or ITB syndrome. Now, um, the first thing that I will say with this video is that I don't know who you are, what you look like, uh, where you're from and what your mechanics are like, but having suffered from IT band syndrome many times in the past, you have to understand there are going to be certain elements of this that will need assessment. But the first thing, or starting from the, the sort of fifth thing and working our way to number one, would be to have a visual assessment of yourself. Okay, the most important thing about a visual assessment on your own is just kind of understanding where your body likes to stand in space. Okay, so if you're standing in front of a mirror in a full length capacity and you're just simply looking at what your joints are doing, you know, are you have you got a hip hike on one side? Do you feel like one one hip is higher than the other? Do you feel like your shoulders may be in the wrong positions? That's a really good starting point into a kind of understanding that there might be some asymmetries going on with the body that could be contributing to your IT band, okay? The IT band is a stretch of wonderful thick connective tissue that runs down the side of your leg. What that connects into is your TFL and it helps to stabilize the leg, but it also helps with flexion and extension and when it comes to external and internal rotation of the leg itself, but also understanding how its role in the pelvis is contributing to gait mechanics or, or how you run. So a lot of runners' knees tend to be with people who have a, a quite a big asymmetry in their running gait, all right? I had a, uh, my land too heavily on my left leg and my left side works harder than my right leg does. So having a visual assessment is a really important tool in understanding where to start. The next thing to do would be to jump into some myofascial release. So I would suggest looking at possibly investing in something like the Functional Patterns 10 week online course, or just simply starting with an IT band release with a foam roller or a medicine ball. This can be done by lying down on the floor, on your side, and getting into the tissue on the IT band that uh, is going to be sore. It's going to be slightly tender, and you want to. You, 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 I would recommend like not rolling up and down on the leg. I would recommend simply just uh, sinking into a particular site that's really tender. IT band syndrome and runner's knee are one and the same thing, and a lot of the time people will present with an issue around the knee itself. So it's important to note that from the sort of knee up to the hip is it is a good area to focus on, hence the IT band release. The third thing to do would be to start releasing into your calf muscles and look at myofascial release in your calf. So getting into the outer portions of the calf and the inner portions of the calf um, would be a, a good place to start. Now remember, if you've got problems with say your left knee, your calf muscle is part of that left leg. And so you need to have an upstream downstream approach. With the visual assessment, we're looking at that upstream downstream approach, like what is upstream from your uh, knee and your IT band, it's the rest of your body. Uh, what is downstream from that is the rest of your leg. So it's important to release that area. With the calf, again, you're looking to release into the tender points and sink into those tender points. Don't do it like a lot of people do in the gym and just roll up and down the leg as quickly as you can and move on to training again. The second most important thing I would suggest for this IT band syndrome is to rest. If you're a runner or if you're a sports person and you've developed this runner's knee, the chances are that you're probably overloading your body as well as overloading an asymmetrical uh, gait mechanic, as it were. Part of that process of understanding and visually assessing yourself and releasing is actually resting and letting the muscle and the tissue around that area get hydrated again. Resting is highly, highly beneficial. The last and most important thing on my list of five things, seek out a functional patterns practitioner. Um, you can find them on the functional patterns website. I'm a functional patterns practitioner myself. Understanding that the visual assessment and seeing a practitioner 
will go a long way into helping you improve your mechanics so that you don't get injured again, so that you don't have any problems with your gait mechanics in the future and you can carry on running and training and living a pain-free life. So the top five things to help you with IT band syndrome have been covered there in my opinion. I feel like point number one is paramount to your success in the future. At the same time, spend some time during your rest periods, during your resting whilst you're recovering and understand how your body functions, understand how your body's mechanics work. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to a friend. If you have any questions, pop the comment down below. I always reply to everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, stay strong and keep moving.